Hello folks, welcome back to another video. Today's gonna be a fairly quick one. We've got to pull the 2014 Chevy in the shop here. It sounds like we've got a squeak in the back somewhere coming from the brakes. A really good way to know if it's your brakes versus suspension, or at least a determining factor can be, does it make the noise whenever you're at a stop? In this case, whenever it's at a dead stop, I'm hearing some squeaking from the back, but if you're braking while you're moving, it could potentially be from your suspension. Just a forethought here. I'm gonna give you the sound and then what I believe to be the issue and we'll tear it apart and take a look at it. So this is what I'm dealing with. I'm gonna set my mic back here so you guys can hopefully hear it. It's on top of the tire. All right, listen for this noise. Hopefully you guys were able to hear kind of that creak, that squeak, it being really, really humid and wet. It rained really hard last night. You're not able to hear it quite as well. But what I think is happening is that in our rear end here, we don't have drum brakes, we have discs. And I think either the top or the bottom bolt that holds the caliper on is probably seized up a little bit and needs some lubricant. So what I've done is picked up some lubricant off Amazon. Um, I'm not necessarily brand particular or anything. But I get a big old thing right here, this per Permatex Ceramic. Uh, it had over 10,000 four or five star reviews. And you know, it was like 18 bucks where I could buy a little bitty tiny tube at Walmart for eight, nine bucks. I thought, you know what? I can get a big old thing and then this is gonna last me forever. So this is the only thing you need right here. I'll leave a link down below if you find you need some sort of brake grease, but this had really, really high ratings. It's ceramic, so you know it's, it's gonna be good stuff. And that is just a good brand. So. What we need to do now is we need to jack this thing up in the air and we need to remove this tire so we can get access to said caliper. This is a relatively simple job. I've got some aftermarket wheels, so I'm gonna need to get in here and remove the covers for them. So in my case here, to remove my wheel, I'm gonna remove this cap. And it has two bolts that hold this cover on. The rest are fake. So I need to remove this. And then I've got a special little socket to fit the lugs on here. So I'll need to get that out, get those busted loose. I was telling stories, it looks like a 19 fits it perfect. And the idea here is that I'm gonna break these loose, but I'm not gonna take them off because we haven't jacked this thing up off the ground yet. You're just gonna see me break all six of these loose. So all six are broke loose. Now I can jack this thing up in the air. That way we can take it the rest of the way off. If you guys don't have the uh, Harbor Freight Daytona low profile jack, you are missing out my friends. I'll tell you this jack right here, I've got some really nice expensive tools. I'm not necessarily a Harbor Freight junkie or anything but I don't know that anybody is making a jack quite as nice as Harbor Freight is for the money. All right, we've got that thing lifted in the air enough. I'm gonna chalk off the front wheels because I'm a bit of on a slope here. I don't want this thing running off on me. Okay, I've got my wheel chalked off in the front so it won't run anywhere. 
Wouldn't hurt to put a jack stand under there. I'm probably gonna put the tire under there to keep me a bit more safe. Always practice safety whenever you're working on suspension components. You know, working under the hood's one thing. I mean, you gotta be careful, obviously, because belts and fans and junk like that. But I'm telling you guys, if you're not doing this proper and uh, this vehicle falls on you, I mean, it, it could be life altering, if not life threatening. That's not terrible. This is our last one. So let's take this off. I'll take this wheel off. Remember, this thing can run on you, so make sure you got your jack stand under there or something to support the weight of the vehicle if it falls. All I'm going to do is roll this tire on its side and set it under here. So, frame will catch it if it does fall. All right, you guys need to come in here a little closer so you can see this action right here. So, this is what we're dealing with here. This is the caliper. You're going to see... There's one bolt right here that holds the caliper on, and there's one on the back side on the bottom there too. That's what holds this caliper in place. And what I think's going on is that one of these caliper pins are not, don't have enough lubricant to slide back and forth, and that's what's causing some of this nasty soundingness. So I'm going to pop this bolt and the bottom bolt off. That should release our caliper where we can swing it up out of the way, do an inspection. Well, my half inch is a little too big, so I'm going to use a rubber mallet on my wrench here. Probably not the best idea in the world, but guess what? It broke it loose. Okay. You know, I don't know if, I can't remember if I've done a video on these rear brakes. I think I replaced them at one point, but nonetheless, that should allow the top one to come loose. Now we got to get the bottom one. That one was a bit easier. Noticing that this top, there's a top nut right here that's trying to spin on me. So I wonder if I need to hold it in place to try to back this thing out. Oh goodness, that's tight. There's the other bolt. Now, this whole caliper should just come right off. And I'm gonna set it up here. You don't wanna hang it by this brake line. That's not good for it. And there you can see are my brake pads, which are still in pretty decent shape. I'll set those right there. And then, there we go, look at that. So, these are the pins that need lubed. They just pop right out of that little rubber housing, bushing there, whatever you want to call it. Although I must say, I am a bit surprised. I thought these were gonna be a bit dirtier, nastier than what they were. Um, these don't appear to be in bad shape. So I'm not sure. I, I suspicioned that it was one of these that was gonna be really dry and squeaking, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and Let's clean them up and let's get some new grease on them. All I'm gonna do now is just hit everything with a little bit of brake part, brake part cleaner. This is gonna eat through some of that grease and crap. See this too? I'm gonna hit that. Probably not good for your hands, so I'm gonna set this on the floor. Try to keep yourself clean if you can. I'll just give this a good wipe down. Cleaning up pretty decent. There we go. I'm gonna clean out little grooves here. Clean up the ends of the brake pads. Maybe the back sides of them. I bet that's where our noise is coming from right there. I bet we need a little bit of grease on this. A 
Ugh, look at all the crud coming off. There we go. Okay, now, now all I'm gonna do is grease up the appropriate parts. Another thing I like about this is look, it's got a brush in it and it doesn't stink or smell or anything. So let's take one of our pins here. Let's give it a good healthy dose after it's dried off this grease. Slide this one in the top. Probably got a little bit too much grease on it, if I'm being completely honest, but it's not going to necessarily hurt anything. See, I'm just rubbing that right on there. Voila. And then I'll slide this one in the bottom. Once again, probably got a little bit too much on there. And now the back sides of these, see how it's kind of wore a groove in there? That probably needs a little grease right there. You don't want to put it on this side. <laughs> this is the brake pad right here. Don't, don't put it on that side. Only put it on the back side here. See, just a nice little amount. You don't need much. I'm going to do the same for this pad. Then I'm completely, being completely honest, I'm not sure if you're supposed to put any on here, but I always do put just a little dab on where these ride with the clips. So I'm gonna put a little there, a little there. And then I believe, one slides in just like so and the other one I'll doctor it up a little we'll slide this one right on the back side Just like so. Now what I'm gonna do is take my caliper and I'm gonna try to, what you may have to do is take a C clamp and push that back in. I'm just gonna try to set it on there and hope that it's gonna fit right over these brake pads. I'll get lucky and not have to fight it. Well, that's pretty lucky. Seems like it's gonna go on. Beautiful. So brakes back on. I'm gonna take these bolts. In this particular application, these didn't come out with any grease and I don't see any reason to put any on there. Um, I, don't, I don't think that it's gonna be necessary. So I'm just gonna screw these back in. Now it is highly likely that there's a torque spec for these, but we're just gonna get it good and tight. That's what we're gonna do. About as tight as I can get it with, with my hands and the tools I'm using here is what I'm gonna do.
Okay, there's one. Now let's hit the bottom. Voila, folks, that's just about it right there. All we gotta do now is put our wheel back on. So I'm gonna put my grease up. All right, so let's slide this wheel out and let's set everything back up there. If you wanted to check and make sure that this is gonna resolve your issue, you could get in there, pump your brakes a few times. Be careful if you're putting it in gear or anything, because once again, you don't want this thing to roll on you or anything. So make sure you have it chalked up good where it won't go anywhere. But I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this. I think it's going to do the trick. So now I'm just going to put this wheel back on, torque it back up, and we will we'll see if she's good. Now that we've got the lugs fairly secure on there, we're going to drop the weight back onto the tire. In a nice slow controlled fashion. And now, very, very important folks. Once again, whenever you're dealing with vehicles, you need to, you need to try to do things right if you can. Let's make sure that we get the wheel lugs torqued back to spec. I've just got a nice cheapo Harbor Freight uh, torque wrench. 38 snap on, but it only goes up to 100 pounds. And we need to go up to 120. It's about the only thing I use this one for, but it's gonna, it's gonna work just fine. 120 on the dot, right there. So now, I can take my 19 mil socket. We can. Work this puppy down. Ooh, I might need an extension. Now I like to go back through and double check my work. Make sure you got them all. Which we did. Now we can put our cover back on. Don't forget to unload your torque wrench. These click styles you're supposed to. Something about spring in them. I don't really know. It's unloaded, folks. And now simply to put the cover back on. Pretty easy job, huh? That's all there was to it. A little bit of heavy lifting. It's not the worst thing in the world. If you can take a tire off, if you can change a tire, you can do this. As you saw, I had just a few common hand tools, nothing crazy. Basically my Allen keys here for my specific application. Uh, some sockets, a wrench. Torque wrench is vital, but you can get that torque wrench for 10, 20 bucks at Harbor Freight all day, every day, pretty much. If my 2024 pricing's right, I don't know. I've had that thing for a while now, guys. But yeah, for for not much money, you can get the job done. And then think about it this way too. If you're doing turning your own wrench, so to speak, like I am here, those tools, I'll get to keep forever. Anytime that I ever need to do work in the future for myself or friends or for family, 
I've got those tools and I can use them again. So that's one thing I really, really like about, I, I just enjoy tools and I think it's handy. Uh, being self-sufficient to me is important. I like that aspect to where I don't have to wait on a shop. No telling what this would have cost at a shop to try to fix this little squeak. They'd have probably sold me brake pads and everything else where 18 bucks and then me already having these tools, I'm done. And this took me, even with filming, maybe 20 minutes, if that. So it's an easy job. Now I could go do the other side if I wanted to, probably in 10 minutes and, uh, and do the fronts if, even if I wanted to. You're supposed to do this whenever you change the brakes or anytime that you're working on brakes. Um, I'm gonna guess that I probably didn't. Just being a bit naive back in the day, I didn't put any of that grease on there. Uh, but I think this is gonna solve our issue. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up, share with your friends that may have a similar squeaking noise in their brakes. And until next time, take care.